Hello and welcome to My Retro Watches. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mike, and if you do enjoy this video, then please consider subscribing by hitting the button down here and the bell button next to it, and that way you'll be alerted for any new content that I upload. So with that out of the way, this video is about cleaning the watch parts of the Seiko 6309 restoration project that I'm doing for the giveaway for the 5,000 subscribers. So uh, my recently uploaded the uh, disassembly video and I left a comment in there to say would you like to see a cleaning video and of course a lot of you said yes so here we go with it I also left a little bit leading saying you know do you think this watch has gone a bit too far now I did that a bit deliberately to be honest with you to get you guys to uh, start um, commenting and I'd like to hear your feedback so it was great because you're all saying of course it's not too far gone please try and restore it I had every intentions of trying to do it it was only if i get to the end and it doesn't really work then perhaps that's when i'm going to bring out the uh, the substitute if you like so rolling on as you know hopefully that if, if you've watched the first uh, the disassembly video that this particular watch movement is pretty filthy it's full of uh, rubbish and debris and crap over from all over the years and i have different methods of cleaning uh, these sort of problem watches. Now I have got a watch cleaning machine, which you will see at some point in this video. Uh, and that's pretty good, but it doesn't get into the, to the dirt and the grime as well as my old traditional method is. Now I did a video quite a while ago on how to clean watch parts at home. There will be a little thing coming across the screen now at the top, and that will link you to that video if you want to see it a little bit more in depth. But I'm pretty much going to show you the same process here and it goes against the grain from some people so I, I kind of expect some comments as to oh you shouldn't do that but this is how it works for me and I suggest you try it if you wanted to and the nuts and bolts are is I'm going to use a bit of water yes water and steel Ooh, rust Ooh, that's very true but if you control it and you control the drying process it's perfectly fine so what you can see here is an ultrasonic machine this is quite a cheap machine i'm not going to keep plugging myself but there is a link below to my tool page on my website where there's some affiliate links you can buy this very uh, uh, ultrasonic right there so if you do want to play along with the video you can get all of this bit of kit it was very cheap i can't remember exactly how much i paid for it 40 pounds something like that and it's got a heater function and it's got a timer function and the heater function I think is important because you know these watches are full of grease hardened grease and dirt and I you know it's like washing your dishes which is why we're going to use some dish soap um, you know you need the heat it's going to help to dissolve or to soften that oil uh, so and of course the ultrasonic process itself uh, is going to help to dislodge it as well so I've done this many many times it tends to work very very well um, I'm also going to be at some point using this particular product which is called Essence of Renata now I do appreciate that I don't think you can get this everywhere in the world it's a chemical and it's for cleaning or degreasing hairsprings and it basically I use I've got to find everything these little jam jars that you get in hotels for your breakfast you get some some jam or at least you do in the UK and and then you take the jam jar home with you and then you use it forever in an ultrasonic machine like I've done so in here is some essence of Renata and I will basically put the balance complete in this and I will actually on this occasion I will wash it also in the ultrasonic but it's in its own little container in that liquid uh, I don't particularly want to wash it wash it with water because there are too many parts within a balance if you're trying to wash it complete that again if you don't dry it very well or very quickly you will get a bit of rust and trust me I've seen it because I've learnt that the hard way. So try and use the, the solvents um, to, to avoid the rust, basically. I've also got some uh, alcohol out, so some IPA 99.9. In this video, I'm not going to use it, but in part, if you haven't got a watch cleaning machine, which most of you probably haven't if you are tinkering yourselves, then trying to use a product like this and certainly some alcohol these are very, very good products to use, um, but obviously make sure that you're using them in a contained manner. Uh, they're both highly flammable, 
you know this is electric they're doubtful that you're going to get a flame in here but certainly always try and keep them in a jar keep a lid on the jar keep yourself safe the last thing i want to know is to be responsible for any of you guys having accidents after watching my videos because that would be horrendous so anyway down to business so what i've got is i'm hoping you can see this by the way because i'm doing all that arc as i always do and um <laughs> I know that I've got to get myself in shot as well as this. I've just got this little Tupperware pot and inside that I've got a little bit of water. That's it. Simple as that. This is a uh, fairy liquid. So everyone in the UK will know fairy liquid. People across the world might not. It's just dish soap really. It's a it's a it's a branded one so it's pretty good. It's got a really daft name, hasn't it? Fairy. So I am literally just going to put a little squeeze don't need much because we haven't got a lot of water too much detergent in any form or you know can run the risk of taking the plating off these metal parts again I've seen that not ever really had it with dish soap but I used to use an ultrasonic type of cleaning fluid and if you didn't measure it absolutely accurately then once you took the parts out of here the really vulnerable thin parts like the click and stuff would be down to bare metal and they wouldn't be shiny anymore which was terrible I mean it still functions fine but you have a little mini heart attack because you think oh, I've just ruined everything through my own stupidity. So little is better. Don't forget the hot water is going to going to help as well. So now I've shown you that I'm going to move the camera so we can see the bench a little bit. And I'm basically just going to load up the parts into various containers and into there. And then we're going to whack them into the ultrasonic and wash them in there. OK. OK, here we are uh, looking at the bench as best as I can try and get the camera angle for you guys. You see the little pot of water with the dish soap in. Uh, this is the part of the 6309. Uh, now, I've already removed the mainspring from the barrel. And one of the guys in the comments on the last one said, I'd love to see inside the, the barrel itself. So I did a little video on the microscope earlier on, and I'll cut to that now. Okay guys, I've uh, cracked open the, uh, the lid of the barrel and what you're looking at now is the main spring inside. Just trying to move that around a little bit. And as much as it's full of old dried oil, at least there's no sign of rust. Uh, so this will need a thorough clean of course. But it should be good for uh, usage. And just to show you the back end of the lid as well. So again, that, let's just get that in focus. And that, if I get a bit of bog wood, pegwood even, we'll see if that's just dirt. And I would suggest that most of it is. Again, it's going to take quite a lot to clean that off in the cleaning machine, but that's what we're going to do next anyway. But I just thought I'd show you the main spring. I didn't show it you on the uh, stripped down video, and it's worthy just to have a quick look inside there and under the microscope and see just how bad it is. That is literally just dried oil that's gone hard and it won't be doing it any good at all. So I will remove the spring from the barrel, clean that by hand, but the barrel itself will go through the cleaning process. Okay, I hope you found that interesting. Seeing inside the barrel, it was pretty dirty. And talking of which, this is the very part itself. So that's gonna need a good soak. And I am quite literally just gonna take that and the lid and put it straight into the liquid. Still on the stand itself is the main plate. Now I have moved the Dioshock jewel on this, uh, the main plate and also the uh, balance itself. And I've put them in their own little self-contained basket. I'm not gonna put them through this process because I'll wash them solely in Renata. I don't want them getting, it's not the bat, I don't wanna get them wet but you can sometimes lose the parts a little bit in the uh, the jar there itself, or the basket there itself, because they're really difficult to see. So again, main plate, just straight in. Now, all the big stuff I put in, and let it sink to the bottom, because again, when I come to take them out later on, it's really, really easy to fish them out of the water. However, all the small parts are a real pain in the proverbial backside. So you use these little baskets that I've got. You can buy these sort of things on eBay, these brass ones, which I used to use a lot of. You can unscrew them. They're very well made. Put all your bits in there, screw them tight. Um, 
and then more recently when I bought the watch cleaning machine it came with some of these baskets which I bought a few more and these are really really good because well one they're flat so they sit a bit better and I just prefer them to be honest with you um, so what I'm going to do is take the lid off a couple of those and I tend to split the parts up so I'm just going to put a few more of the big parts in here while we do it and so for instance I have found here you won't be able to see that but that is a donor uh, pallet fork so that's going to go in there the original pallet fork which have the rust on it I'm also going to clean that because why not you know if you never know it might come up okay so I put lots of fragile things in one so these are the actual train wheels themselves going in there and the escape wheel and the pull lever because like I say they're quite fragile uh, other things that aren't as fragile are just some more of the the wheels for instance I can never get hold of this thing the ratchet wheel is a real pain because it's flat as so if it goes in the water again it's hard to get out so I put that in a separate basket the click can go straight in into there uh, this I don't know I mean you probably can't see these parts but I'll just tell you so this is the arbor for the um, mainspring itself again because it's small it can go in that one but I don't want it rattling around with all the wheels so I'll put it in the one with all the the bigger bits if you like so we have the setting lever that can go in there the little pin for the setting lever we need to wash that so that can go in there and again things like the yoke uh, and these the cover plates they can all go in the liquid because it's they're easy enough to get hold of that's the date um the, sorry, yeah the date um click spring so it is just as simple and as straightforward as this that is the canon pinion for instance that can go in and the minute wheel Again, I can't get hold of the minute wheel, so we will just pick that up with a bit of Rodico. Chuck it in the basket. And then we have the rather rusty rotor. Let's put that in. And of course, the um, stem. And here's the clutch, so the clutch can go in the basket. Now, realistically, guys, that is the main part of the watch, uh, the, the watch that I want to clean. Okay, I need to clean the case and things like that and the balance I'll do separately. I've left all the screws. Now I tend to do the screws separately anyway in another basket. Um, I guess it's important to wash screws. Um, but again, if you are just setting out and you're trying to do this yourselves, I'd recommend trying to get some sort of cup, cup, I can never say this word, compartment tray like this, uh, where you can keep the screws separate and know which screws are for what. After a while you get pretty used to it, but um, it can be daunting at first because the last thing you want to do is put a long screw in a short screw hole and then it push through the other side and do some damage. So try and keep them separate. They're not essential to, for, to the running of the watch if they're a bit dirty. It's more the, the other parts. So, okay, there we are. I'm going to put the lids on the two baskets that I've created. Uh, I'm going to create a little bit of space in here. I'm not fussed about the, the parts rattling around together too much at this stage i've never seemed to have much of a problem with that so we chuck them in i'm going to put the lid on and we're going to put them into the ultrasonic so i will change the camera angle again we'll put them in the ultrasonic and let that run i'm going to let it run for probably about 15 to 20 minutes on a, on a hot wash of 50 degrees centigrade um of course the ultrasonic made lots of noise but we'll we'll bear with that of course i'm not going to do this real time because this video would be horrendously long if i did such a thing as that so we'll just cut to the next camera shot right i've put the basket in sorry the well, the, the box into the to the ultrasonic now there is some water in there you can just probably see that underneath and i've only fill it enough to sort of come halfway up this plastic tub. If we go too far, then the water runs a risk of getting in or the tub starts floating around. As far as I'm concerned, because it's in liquid and it's in liquid there as well, the ultrasonic will do its thing. It tends to work for me every time like this. 
and you can put more water in like I say but it just ends up moving around and gets really annoying uh, again if you're going to use the jars with the flammable liquids in ultrasonic the ultrasonic machine will only ever work itself with water in it so never run it dry because that will cause you more problems so okay I'm going to get it started and um, I'll walk away and I'll come back very shortly Okay, welcome back. So that was 15 minutes of hot ultrasonic action. And uh, now is the moment of truth. We're gonna remove the lid and uh, see what we've got. And hopefully, as you can see, that looks uh, like it's full of, it's like a weak tea, isn't it really? Now let's just see if I bring it up to the camera a bit more. You can see that it's done a good job, really. It's cleaned a lot of stuff out. And so what I now need to do, of course, is remove all of the parts. Now, if you were doing this and you only had the ultrasonic, uh, it's best to use stuff like this. Let's bring it over. This is a watchmaker's tissue paper. Uh, now, the reason for that is the the watchmaker's paper, it's a bit like tracing paper really, it hasn't got so many fibers in it. Obviously the problem you might face is that the fibers of towels or tissues uh, get stuck into the parts. So after you've cleaned them, these little micro bits get stuck in there and then they're gonna hinder you. However, I have another um, theory really because this is not the only wash you're gonna do. So even if you were doing this in an ultrasonic, now my old fashioned route was to do this first, and then I would wash the parts, usually in the Renata, or certain parts in the Renata, and certainly alcohol. Uh, but first of all, I'd dry the parts, and then I'd rewash them, as I say, in two of the fluids. And then that way you get a very clean wash right at the end because all the, the, the the bits off the tissue paper have gone. But of course, because we've used water, we wanna make sure that these parts are dried and dried well and not left to sit in anything damp because that would then cause rust. Now, in the winter months, certainly here in the UK, what I used to do is I'd take them out of here, I'd dry them a little bit on, the, on a towel, let them sit there for a few minutes, and then I'd get another towel and I'd put it in like a little plastic sandwich box or something. And then I'll put the parts in there and then I'll put it on top of my radiators or my heaters. Uh, and usually overnight, of course, all the parts would dry. Uh, but you keep turning them on the towel first so you get rid of all the, the obvious uh, moisture. Um, now I'm using quite a thick towel here and I'm literally just gonna drop those onto that now, dry them off, and then I'm gonna get the watch cleaning machine going. So I'm gonna load up the baskets for the watch cleaning machine and run it through the cycles there. So obviously I know you might want to see everything uh, but it's kind of pointless showing you every single component coming out of this liquid. I'm just trying to do this while standing up. So I take for instance the main plate out. I'm just literally going to dab it a few times, turn it over, move it into a separate part of the towel to suck up more of the moisture. I'm really not worried at the moment because again, as I say, this is gonna go into my watch cleaning machine and because that's all waterless um, fluids that it's gonna wash this, no problem at all. So I haven't got too many concerns. So the next bit you'll see is me loading up the basket for the um, watch cleaning machine and then I'll talk you through that uh, machine as well and you'll be able to see it in action. Okay, so I've dried all the parts or let them dry on the towel for a little while, turn them over a few times. So as far as I'm concerned, they're good to go 
into the watch cleaning machine. And the watch cleaning machine has this particular device. And if you've been on any of the Facebook groups, perhaps you've seen these before. And these are just a, a few layers of different types of baskets. So you have three compartments all told. And of course, all I'm gonna do is load up these bits in various places in there. I'm also gonna use the small baskets once again for the small and fragile things. And then I'm gonna run it through the cycle. Uh, one thing to note, I'm gonna try and see if I can offer this up to the camera. This is the barrel. And despite all that cleaning in the ultrasonic, I'm still not happy with it. It's got quite a lot of wear on the lid there, on the back of it as well. So I'm gonna run this again through the uh, ultrasonic and perhaps clean it separately to everything else. Um, failing that, I've got another barrel as well, which I may well use because it does, to me, look pretty uh, rough. So I'm gonna load them up, like I say, I don't think you really need to see me doing that, it's pretty self-explanatory. And then I'll introduce you to my vintage watch cleaning machine. Okay. Welcome to the Brenray watch cleaning machine. Uh, now this is a vintage machine. Um, I would not like to hazard a guess at when it was uh, made, but it was a long time ago. And it was originally owned, well not originally, I bought it off a guy called Simon Wilkinson. He's got a name for himself, he's all over the groups. Absolute wizard at um, Seiko's. Great help to me, bit of a mentor. And he's got a better machine now and he sold me this one but first of all he had refurbished it and made it work perfectly so if you're watching simon thanks very much because this has become an essential essential tool coupled with that another member in the group peter hurst sent me this can you believe it this is like an original advertisement uh, for the Brenray, uh, the Imp Mark II. I mean, that's brilliant, isn't it? And certainly very retro with the the figure here, trying to date it, you know, maybe the 50s, who knows? It then goes on to show other machines and other things that they were doing, ultrasonic, for instance. So that's really, really cool. Uh, so thanks as well, Peter. Uh, it's quite cool to have a little bit of history uh, to the machine. So anyway, how do these machines work? They work on a basic principle of spinning. So they're gonna spin the basket, which is here now loaded up, and they're gonna spin them through uh, fluids. So you can see kind of here, here, and here. Now that one looks particularly dirty, and yes, it is due a change. Um, but what, basically what you've got is a cleaning fluid, and then I think the theory is you're supposed to have two rinses. Uh, however, I've got cleaning fluid, cleaning fluid, and one rinse. I need to buy some more fluids, but they're very, very expensive. So we are talking probably nearly 50 pounds per uh, liquid with delivery and everything else. Uh, so I'm kind of saving up for that. I need to do some more restorations, or I need you guys to watch all the adverts on my YouTube channel. And that way I might actually get a kickback and be able to afford to buy the, the, the cleaning fluids. But that's just a little minor joke there, by the way. Uh, we only get paid, I think, if you guys watch ads. I'll just put that out there. So anyway, here's the machine. And so you've got the, the three different jars, and then at the back here, you've also got a heater for the end spin to dry the parts off. And all we're gonna do, first of all, is we're gonna switch the machine on. And I'm gonna undo a wing nut on the side here and we'll just park it at the front for a moment i get the basket it's got these little they're like little screws and I, you hook the basket over them like so going to take the lid off the first one and quite straightforward just going to lower it down into the cleaning fluid and then we have this little knob on the side here which is a speed so we're going to turn that and as you can see just try and see if I can zoom in a bit for you move it across 
that is now spinning in there. Now, it does take a little while for this motor to actually warm up a little bit. So it can be a bit erratic. So if I turn it up quite fast, it'll spin really well. But then if I leave it for a few minutes and it gets warm, it spins even more. So the trick for me is to turn it down a little bit because otherwise the cleaning fluid comes up the sides and goes over the top. Now I need to leave that in there for roughly about 10 minutes. Let me just switch it off for a moment so you can hear me. I need to leave it up, well I do it about 10 minutes in each jar and then probably only about five minutes in the, um, the dryer. So I'll spin it in there 10 minutes, I'll lift it out a little bit, spin it again just to get rid of the, the, uh, the cleaning fluid before dipping it into the other one. So I'm going to set this away. Maybe I'll do my time lapse video again for a bit of fun. And you guys can sit back, watch that spin and uh, listen to some music. Okay guys, I'm just going to keep going through the jars, as you can see, but it's pointless me just uh, time lapsing all of that just for a bit of fun because it's going to take ages otherwise. So I'll wash all the parts like this, we'll dry them, and then I'll cut back to the bench and we'll put some of the components onto the microscope and we'll examine how good or bad this cleaning has gone. I'm hoping it's going to go well. Um, but then again, I've had similar watches like this before and you go through all this process and you find that they're still dirty and basically you have to repeat it. So the next bit you'll see will be back on the bench. Okay, parts are all now washed. They're still in the basket. I've just put it here. It's still a little bit warm, but it's fine. And I'm holding the camera freehand um, because I thought I'd get a little bit closer. So I don't really want to touch the parts at this stage. And typically I can't get anything out, but you can see them sparkling a little bit here, which is heartening. And again, there are, they're the main plate. So what I'm gonna do is gonna put some finger cuts on. I'm gonna set the microscope up and we'll just put a few parts on. I'm not gonna go through, I mean, obviously I'm gonna go through every single part and I'm gonna look at everything that I think needs to be looked at. Uh, but for the intent of this video, we'll look at some of the uh, wheels, the pivots that we were worried about at the time, certainly the main plate and maybe a few others. Uh, just to give you an idea of, you actually, if you've watched the disassembly video, you'll have seen how dirty everything was. So we can compare that now with this one process, this first clean, as to just how good it's done. So I'm going to cut to the microscope now and you'll see the parts as I see them for the first time. Okay, welcome to the microscope, and here we go. So I'm not gonna use the other eyepiece, I'm just gonna try and use the camera, uh, because I've realized now that the more I look through the uh, other eyepiece, because my eyes are really weird compared to <laughs> anything else, what I see in focus clearly from my filming previously is not what you see. You see a blur, I see a clear picture. So I'm gonna try and do it this way. It might be a little bit more tricky because I've not done it this way before. But what we're looking at now, of course, is the main plate. And we have the motion side of the main plate. And that is the center jewel. Now, if you remember, that was absolutely coated in oil. I thought we'd do this side first because this is where main, the main jewels are and they did look pretty unhealthy at the time. So you are quite literally seeing this as I am. And now it's clean, we can look. So the one right in the middle there is the uh, escape um, jewel. No, it's not, I don't think, sorry. It's the uh, pallet fork jewel. And just check into, it looks like it's out of round that jewel, but of course it's not, it's just the angle and the reflection. But clearly that's nice and clean. And then we move along to the next one and difficult to say looks like there might be some sort of i don't know if that's debris i don't think it is debris i think it's just mark in the jewel around the hole but it looks uh, okay that looks nice and clean 
So then we just check out the general condition of the plate itself. And let's add a focus there. So, and that would be where the uh, balance pivot goes in. Of course, I, I said I removed the jewel, so you know that looked to me originally it was full of dirt. So, so far it looks pretty good. There's still what could be considered corrosion. It's also coming through a little bit yellowy, but I think that is the light in here rather than the actual main plate itself. So I'll turn it over as well and we'll look at the other side. And uh, I wanted to try and see if I can remember where it is. Actually, it's on that side, right? That's why I can't find it. So, sorry, back on the main plate, uh, on the motion side, this is the barrel arbor. And what you want to be looking for in here, or what you don't want to see in here, is wear, because the, if it's been wearing, it means it's been rubbing. And if it's been rubbing, then it will be out of round. So you want to be looking at the plating itself and seeing that it's pretty much still silver. Now it's hard for me to do here whilst talking and trying to focus this uh, because the light's not too good and of course it keeps showing that it's yellow so it's false. But you know, at a glance I'm thinking that there's not been any arbor wear at all there and that hole is pretty good. So again, we'll just turn it back over to the other side, which is what we were originally trying to do. And that is where the shock jaw would sit in there. And that looks pretty good. And the underside of the jaws again. Sometimes you get these reflections that look like bits, but they're just reflections. And definitely the center jaw is good. So, you know, at a glance here so far, the main plate has cleaned up astonishingly well. So, well, not astonishingly well because it's I've, I've tried and tested um, way of doing it. So, ironically, this is all that pitting that was on the uh, counterweight or on the the rotor. Now, under the microscope, it still looks pretty bad because it is, but visually uh, to the eye, it's pretty good. Um, I'm just trying to select some more parts. So if we go for the train wheel bridge now, and here it is again, we've got some jewels to look at on here. Now that one, is that a bit of wear or discoloration? Very hard to tell. I might need to look at that a bit closer, uh, but it's clean. And these uh, six 309s, they're like a tank movement. I mean, they, they are almost indestructible. If um, any of you ever watched Top Gear many years ago with Jeremy Clarkson and the series they did with the Toyota Hilux, where they tried to destroy a Toyota Hilux all the way through the series by doing crazy things to it, like throwing it in the sea and blowing it off the top of a building and the thing would still start. I think that the 6309 from Seiko is the Toyota Hilux. <laughs> Um, of the watch world. So we do have a little bit of rubbing here. So see where it's gone gold there and actually that as well could be just trying to find my pegwood. So it could be still some residual debris there. Yes it is. See how that's wiping off now. It hasn't quite cleaned up this as well as I'd like but it clearly the ratchet wheel has been rubbing on there. Now that normally you would associate that the ratchet wheel rubbing on there is the barrel, but perhaps the uh, ratchet screw was loose. Who knows? Uh, I'm not too worried at this stage. Again, it does look quite healthy. Uh, so let me get some of the small parts and we'll have a look at some of the, some of the wheels that we were worried about on the disassembly. So I was particularly worried about the fourth wheel. And here is the fourth wheel. Interestingly on the Seiko's, or on the Seiko 6309, you have this hole pattern. And you have four holes 
for the fourth wheel, three holes for the third wheel and two holes for the center wheel. I can only assume that that is for the reason. So you can see what I'm doing while I'm talking here is just looking at the, the pivot there. Now that is actually where the second hand would sit. And then we go all the way down to the leaves here. And you just want to be checking for damage. Uh, at the moment I'm checking really for debris. Normally you'd also want to be looking at all these teeth as well to make sure that they're all there. Um, now I don't know how I'm going to get a shot of the other side. Maybe if I hold it and try and focus. Because it, wee, that's a bit special. So it was this top pivot that I was a bit concerned about on the disassembly. And it's hard to say because of the, the way the light's getting it and the way my hand's shaking. But you know, I think that's actually going to be all right. So let's just pick another, let's try and pick up the escape wheel because the escape wheel had some dirt on it. Sorry if you keep having to look at this white screen while I select the parts, but I'm almost doing this. I'm doing it live in many respects, although it's being recorded. And the escape wheel is trying to escape. Okay, so here we go with that. And once again, it really likes to run around, doesn't it? So instantly there's a bit of tarnish. Now tarnish you can live with. Um, wow, this thing is really sensitive. And you know why? I've just realized why this is so sensitive. Um, perhaps you might be able to tell. My tweezers have become magnetized. And that is why it is now jumping all over the place. So I'm just looking for another set of tweezers that are magnetized and then we can start again with this. So there we go, so the leaves are okay, um, but there is still tarnish to the wheel. And to be honest with you, looking like that, it probably will work. And we could try it, but I would be more inclined personally to change that. I'm just gonna turn it over to the other side now. Don't worry, that's not my tweezers this time, it's just the, I knocked it and if you want to look at that bottom pivot as well. So that looks reasonably healthy. So the escape is okay too. And for not wanting to make this video uh, too long, perhaps we will try to find the two um, pallet forks. So here is one. And here is the other. So one of these was the donut, and one of these was the one that was originally in the movement. So we're not really going to tell much from this side because it was rusted on the other side. So again, we're getting that bad lighting, makes it look gold, but this one has cleaned up. Okay, so it would, yes, there we go. Without a shadow of a doubt, that's the one that came out of the watch. And you can see there that that, that part there at the end, I'm forgetting the name of it now, is um, too corroded and that will cause trouble. I mean, anything to do with the contact with the um, balance impulse jewel, it's got to be clean and crisp because if you get a different knock there or a slight snag, it'll throw the timing way out. So this um, pallet fork is 100% um, scrappable. I mean, I'll just put it in my spares, you never know. I don't know how to change jewels yet, but there may be a day where I might be able to utilize these once I've learned how to. But certainly for now, we'll put that one out of the way so we don't get it mixed up. And we're gonna run with this one for the actual watch. So, with all of that said and done, this video is gonna be quite long. I didn't really anticipate it being too long, but I've got very uh, into detail. I'm just putting this on the scope for, for a shot. I wanna finish the video here. So, you know, um, I hope that you found this useful. 
Uh, it seems that I've done a lot of talking on this one, um, but I think perhaps uh, you might learn something from it or certainly the technique I'm doing. Um, so if you have, great, fantastic. Please, as always, leave me a like. Uh, comment down below. I'm loving the comments right now. It's been quite hard to keep up with them um, because you're all commenting a lot and I want to answer as many as I possibly can. Uh, for those who are asking, well, how do I win this? Um, you've got to subscribe to the channel. It's really important. I want you to subscribe. I want you to support the channel that way. Watch my content and certainly watch all of the videos because if you want to win this watch, you've got to want it. And I'm putting in a hell of a lot of time and effort in order for uh, the, the lucky winner. So I'm hoping that the winner is somebody who appreciates the watch for what it is and the amount of work and time and effort I've put in to restore it. So, you know, uh, please follow along to the story because that lucky winner has then got the whole history of this being restored. And David Hammond was the winner of the 1000 subscribers and he's now quite passionate. He's commenting on the videos all the time. He's in the Facebook group and he's now serviced to watch for the very first time. And some of that he's putting down to me and my videos. I'm trying not to inflate my own head here because I don't want that to happen. But it just goes to show that, you know, um, I may have inspired him in some way as I'm trying to inspire as many of you guys as possible to get into this hobby and try this out for yourselves. So look, I'm gonna end it there. Uh, as I say, like, subscribe, leave comments. Please join the Facebook group, uh, Retro and Vintage Watches and Restorations. There's now also another Facebook group that I'm admin for and that's allied to uh, Mark Lovett of um, the Watch Repair channel and it's called Watch Repair Lessons. I'm gonna leave a link down below for that, and that's a Facebook group where you can actually also talk to Mark and myself. So hopefully I'll see you there, and I definitely will see you in the next video. Not too sure whether the next video is gonna be on this particular uh, watch right now, uh, but certainly there will be a rebuild video of this uh, to come. So stay tuned. Thanks very much for watching.